I'm very happy to moderate this upcoming session now, and I will hand over to the speakers of the session, Educational Horizons, Uniting MOOCs and Open Educational Resources. So, Please. hello everyone, and welcome to our presentation. We are, I'm Minna Koponen, and I come from Zurich University Applied Sciences. I work there as a ZHV Digital Campus lead and educational designer. And I have here also my colleague, Nicole Krüger. Would you like to, Nicole, present shortly yourself? Hello, I'm Nicole from the OER team of the ZHV. Um, and this OER team is located at the university library, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Nicole. So uh, today we will discuss or explore the opportunities and challenges of integrating open educational resources, OER, into massive open online courses, MOOCs. We want in our presentation offer some practical perspectives, what we have experienced till now, when MOOC teams publish their materials under OER and open licenses. Also, we will share some insights. We have now produced eight, eight MOOC productions uh, in different departments at the ZHV, and we are highlighting our strategies for fostering awareness and effectively combining OER and licensing. Next, please. Uh, creating, creating high quality MOOC at the ZHV begins with the support of ZHB Digital Fund, which offers funding rating from 25 to 75%, depending on the platform. And in the moment, we will have global edX platform and also Swiss national platform called Swiss MOOC Services, both based on open edX environment. We started in summer 2020, with the two MOOC productions. And already in autumn 20, we uh, announced those two in global platform. And that was a big moment for us because we were the first university applied sciences in the world which announced MOOC, MOOCs in global platform. Already in spring 20, we had two MOOCs live aquaponics and global business and human rights. In 2020, it was, it was quite busy year for us. We were producing four global MOOCs, had already some reruns, and at the same time, we started our MOOC production to national Swiss MOOC services. In 23, we had already more reruns, and at the same time, we made co copies from global MOOC, MOOCs to national platform from open material perspective. Today in 24, we have already eight MOOCs, 11 MOOCs in SMS, many, many reruns, almost 23,000 students from globally and what the most important, we have developed our production process. Next, please. So, some words about the process itself. In ZHV Center, Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, where I also work, leads production processes. But we are in close operation with the ZHV library OR team, where also Nicole comes. And together, we guide the MOOC teams through each phase of development. What is crucial in our MOOC production is also actually the design phase, where we are really mapping existing materials and what we really need to do. And after that, we, when we have designed a plan in my scripting tool, what is actually created and developed in 
sit at Zethave, it will be a plan for material production, including video pro production. And this material production phase is really crucial also from the perspective from OER and licensing. Nicole will, will present more about that. Yes, thank you, Mina. So at Zurich University of Applied Sciences, since 2020, we have an OER policy. And this policy encourages all teachers to publish their materials under open licenses, like Creative Commons licenses. And MOOCs are already very open uh, for learners. They can register in the MOOCs and learn, uh, go through the courses free of charge. But when we also publish these MOOC materials under open licenses as OER, then reuse will be allowed uh, to other teachers, but also learners. And this um, comprehensive uh, contains remixing materials, revising them, adapting them, and then again, redistributing the materials. So the connection between MOOCs and OER, I mean, when we look at OER from the perspective of open licenses, there is a twofold connection. And one of them, I mean, on the one hand, MOOC teams can benefit from including existing OER into their MOOCs. They build large courses and usually they want to include materials from institutions, from publications or other educational materials or images. And as MOOCs are made for a larger audience, they are not restricted to a certain and smaller classroom setting. So usually during the MOOC production, um, MOOC teams can only make use of their own material or they have to ask for permission with the copyright holders if they want to include external materials. So they can largely benefit from open educational materials that are already published out there under open licenses, open access publications under Creative Commons licenses, also government materials, NGO materials, institutional materials, which are openly licensed, which they can include into their own MOOC and don't have to redesign or uh, create from, from scratch. But on the other hand, MOOCs are already published. I mean, they go public uh, for a larger audience, so they have to adhere to the copyright restrictions, which are very strict. So creating MOOC materials and publishing them under open licenses from one to the other is only a very small step. And if you publish your MOOC, not only free of charge, but also under an open license, you can have several benefits from that, like the visibility can be enhanced. As the Creative Commons licenses, they have the condition that people that redistribute the material, they have to link to the original material, name the original material, and also the authors of the original. So you are visible if others make use of your own material and redistribute this in their own channels. But yeah, open uh, educational materials, they also create synergies as these MOOC materials can be reused in other educational projects. As I pointed out in the previous slide, other MOOCs can reuse your material, other textbooks, blogs, or also, which is uh, pointed out on the bottom of this slide, in open pedagogy scenarios where students become creators, where students co-create with their teachers and publish their own projects on the web, also in form of videos, be it uh, GitHub pages or blogs. I mean, usually in these projects, students build upon existing material and the larger the pool of existing OER they can build upon, the more rich are these open pedagogy projects. On the right side, uh, I pointed out the sustainability. I mean, always having in mind that MOOCs already contribute a lot to the SDG4, making quality and uh, valuable educational materials available to all. Not all countries and all, not all learners from all cultural backgrounds are used to registering for MOOCs and going through such courses, even also in English language. 
So teachers, other education stakeholders from uh, certain communities, countries and cultures can reuse these MOOC materials, translate them, upload them uh, to more locally used platforms and make them available even to a larger audience there in their own uh, yeah, environments, learning environments. So this raised the question for us, how can we as the MOOC support team and the OER team from the library um, support the MOOC teams in, a, in the best way to make them acquainted with uh, the licenses, copyright restrictions, and also with publishing their own materials as OER under open licenses. Now I hand over to Mina. Thank you, Nicole. So to understand, as Nicole also mentioned, that how we can assist, assist MOOC teams, we of course have already four years production experience and we have faced many possibilities, but also challenges. And therefore we were interested in to hear also MOOC teams, opinions, perspectives, suggestions. And we made a, a small survey in 23, where we're involving four global MOOC teams that provided valuable insight about the challenges and opportunities. Also, following that, we had now in this year, this spring, a small SWOT, SWOT analysis was conducted with seven MOOC teams from global edX platform and also from Swiss MOOC services, further emphasizing the required support areas. The results, we can go, yes. The results were consistent on strength and threats, while weaknesses and opportunities showed the most variation. Accessibility as a strength, accessibility and inclusivity, and also open licensing were seen a real strength in promoting equal access to educational resources and bridging gaps in accessibility, making quality materials available to a global audience. As weaknesses, there were more variation. Quality concerns, time and effort for curation, curation in searching, evaluating and creating OE material can be time consuming, was mentioned. Also, there were, uh, mentioned, there were mentioned the limited support, although we have a strategy and we have organized support throughout the production. As a threat, uh, the main, main uh, result was related to copyright and licensing challenges. Of course, commercial interest was also and resistant to change. And opportunities, the biggest possibility and opportunity was global collaboration. It was seen as a key advantage as OER facilitates global collaboration among educators, institutions and learners. Also innovation in teaching and learn learning was another opportunity. Enable education to experiment with innovative teaching methods and materials. Access to edu expanded access to education was also there. And one interesting was professional development. Enabling educators to stay updated on current trends and practices in their field. As a result, uh, also, so as a result revealed many valuable insight on moving forward and gave us many practical perspectives to concentrate on. And these taste tastements gave us also a belief that there is, there is hope moving forward. <laughs> the potential including or is quite helpful. The problem is that they seem very complicated also was one 
and the processing was seen sometimes challenging. But what we decided is that we will do it differently and have copyright workshops for all the content creators of the MOOC. So to summarize, yeah, here is also to summarize, uh, we realize that always we are maybe thinking about time, but MOOC, te MOOC team statements was that once that it's clear what to use and not to use, the additional time is not a material. So they, they can move forward. Also, they liked the idea. And what we also experienced, that MOOC product production and pro they will need comprehensive support. So therefore, we, we are committed to transparent, transparently communicating the sources of OER used, ensuring accountability and promoting a culture of collaboration. Next slide. So, from now on, we will have OER and licensing support from the very beginning, already in design phase for all MOOC teams, and continue that in material production, material review, and also video production. Would you like to add something, Nicole? No, I, I think it covers it quite well. I mean, that we started from two different positions. We um, wanted to be the first uh, University of Applied Sciences covering the MOOC field and uh, producing MOOCs, having professional and high quality MOOCs out there for a global audience. And on the other hand, we had this uh, strain of OER policy and fostering the culture of sharing in the university for all materials that are out there um, and that can be published on the web. And then this came together. So we saw that MOOC has high potential. I mean, they are these professional materials which are created um, yeah, with this didactical setting, with this great support from, from your team and that there is a large potential for OER and making this more open available under open licenses. So I think now we came to a great um, step to integrate this into this process. So, yeah, I think I don't have to add anything on that. Thank you, Nicole. So next, then it's time for discussion and questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, great and innovative talk. And um, I'll have the floor open now to questions and we'll stop the recording.